Okay. Hello and welcome to the Venus Factor. I'm Coach Liz and today I have Couture with me, a Venus veteran and personal friend. Hello. Hi, Thank you for b doing this with me. And uh, we're experimenting with video too, so y'all have to let us know uh, how you like that. So tell me like how long you've done Venus, how did you find Venus, all that. Um, okay, I started with Venus in June 2011. And, um, I found it, I think I did a Google search and I don't remember exactly how I found it or what my search query was, but mm -hmm. I found it and I saw the blog and they, I think they had just done their, maybe their second contest. And I was like, wow, I don't know. Something about it really spoke to me. I think partly because it was based more on metrics and I am naturally an hourglass. Like I'm, even when I'm like overweight, which I was when I found Venus, um, so that really kind of spoke to me. And also, um, there was something about it that just seemed very, um, authentic and real. It didn't have this like, okay, yes, it was a 12 week program, but it wasn't like some of the other programs that I had like tried or looked at, you know, that you do the, I think it's Dan Johnson. There's the park bench and then there's the bus bench and the bus bench is usually what people do where it's like this incredibly intense, like 12 weeks of like, I've got to get in shape for this event and lose all of the weight I've gained in like five years and like 12 weeks. And, uh -huh. um, I didn't get that feeling going in. And I think too, it was maybe also like a part of my life or a season of my life where it was kind of like, um, I had reached that place where it didn't matter how long it took me. I really wanted to be in shape for life. And when I purchased Venus, like there was the money back guarantee. There's all these women that were getting in shape with it that I'd seen with the few contests that I kind of looked at on their blog. And I thought, I really want to try this. Even if I like take my time doing it, I want to try this. So I bought it. I started literally, um, I started doing one set of every exercise with no weights because I have fibromyalgia yeah. and mm -hmm. I was just determined like even if I don't reach my end goal in th at the end of 12 weeks which I knew wasn't going to happen I had probably about 45 ish pounds to lose so um I didn't have unrealistic expectations either mm -hmm. um but I was like even if it takes me some time I'm gonna like stick with this and do this it's kind of like that thing where I didn't want to yo-yo. Mm -hmm. I had lost over 120 pounds and I had kept it off for, I don't know, maybe by that time, I think it was like nine or 10 years, um, the majority of it. And I'd gained some back and, um, I just, in that entire stretch, yes, I had lost all that weight, but there was always that nagging fear of gaining it back. And not mm. knowing what to do. Cause I was so at that, by that point I was white knuckling it a lot where I was like super strict with what I ate, exercising constantly. And I was already, um, I'd had uh, mono. I had the fibromyalgia. I had hypothyroidism and I just felt really depleted. So when I came to Venus, I, I think I just came to it kind of like oh, on my knees. Like I really need something. And so that's long story short. That's kind of how I found the long story. And that was long. in, uh, what, what year did you find it? 2011. So I've been with Venus now almost five years. Yes. Yeah. Five years. You were with Venus before I was, you were a veteran whenever I was a newbie. Oh really? I don't remember. Yes. I thought you were already on board. Okay. No, I didn't start till 2012. So, so you've maintained, you have lost and maintained for five years. Yes. 45 pounds. Yes. It took me a couple of years to really reach kind of like my, um, I'm not, I'm not in, um, uh, like bikini competition, like body fat levels or anything. I never, it's never been my aim. I like a softer look. Um, I'm probably sitting, I would guesstimate, I'm probably sitting at about 24% body fat for, I'm 5'11" or roughly 5'11 mm -hmm. and 170 pounds right now. And for me, that's actually really good. Um, and you look great. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I spent a lot of years being very dissatisfied with my body and trying to reach the, the size zero 
J. Crew model, like itsy bitsy look, and it's just not me. So it took me a couple of years of just being really consistent and going at my own pace. I did the, I think it's called phase one now, but the, the 12 week workout, Mm -hmm. I did that probably four or five or six times. Like I would finish and I just restart and Mm -hmm. I kept doing that. So that's kind of where I started. So talk about, uh, you talked about that you had, um, fibromyalgia and other health issues. Like what was life like when you started? Like how, how did that affect you? Um, well, the fibromyalgia and the hypothyroidism, I, I do take medication for my hypothyroidism and I've since found out, um, just uh, about a year and a half ago that I have Hashimoto's, which is the autoimmune version of, um, hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised had I tested for it back then to find out I had it then to be honest, but, um, my life consisted of not only just like the mindset of fear of gaining weight. Um, I had a lot of body pain, muscle pain, and there were times where I just could not maintain a more physical job, like a physical demanding job because of the pain. Um, you know, especially in my like back, um, backside, I just, it's really, at one point I was taking, um, narcotics just to kind of try to control it. To control the pain. Yeah. Yeah. And once I, I, the reason I started, um, Venus so slowly is it's like, I don't want to start up any, I don't want to make anything flare up by going too hard, too heavy. Um, I had done that. I don't know if I can like, I don't know what I can mention for other exercise programs I've tried, but no. I've tried um, Tracy Anderson method and that about killed me and ran me into the ground. Like, uh, try to P90X. I've tried a lot of different things. And I think the reason that they never stuck is because they are so intense. And um, if you're not, if they really mean, if you're not in like good overall health, you shouldn't do this. Right. And, right. um, I couldn't, and at that point too, I hadn't learned to be flexible enough where I could like go, okay, take apart. yeah, mm-hmm. take it apart and kind of reverse engineer it to a place where I can do this and start building mm-hmm. on it. And I hadn't learned to be kind to myself. Um, I learned a lot from Venus about that as well. So when I started the workouts, I, like I said, the first week, I think I only did one set. I didn't use any weights at all, even for like little bicep curls. I just was like, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And then the next week I had um, a set of two and three pound dumbbells that I used. And I think I only got up to doing two sets of all the exercises for probably my first year before I felt mentally ready ready to like say, I can try this and the soreness is probably not going to bother me. And I've noticed with my body when I don't regularly lift weights and and strength train, um, I notice I definitely, my posture suffers, my aches get worse. Um, Mm -hmm. I read a recent study here in the last year that it's not just running that gives you the runner's high or the endorphins. It's, a lot of exercises do that. Right. And for me, weightlifting does that without um, any, a lot of negative like side effects, uh-huh. like so many workouts. So uh-huh. yeah, that was uh-huh. kind of, it's really been the one huge factor that has significantly impacted my like pain levels um, is, is weights. And I credit Venus for that because I never would have tried weightlifting. I was always the yeah, I'll do three pounds, but nothing heavier. Cause you know, there is so much stigma about getting bulky and there are some girls that get really jacked, but you've got to be lifting really heavy and eating a lot of food. Yeah. And you also have to be kind of genetically inclined. Yes. Well, like someone who's 5'11 is probably not going to have the genes to get bulky. <laughs> no, usually it's like a lot of those girls are really short or they're oh. already just really have a lot. Like, I don't know. I, it's, I have not gotten bulky. I have never really put on so much muscle that I, I've had to start, like, modifying any aspect of my weightlifting where it's like, yeah. oh, i got to back off on this. Yeah. Just, has, just hasn't happened. And so, yeah. 
<laughs> so um, you talked about that um, there was a big mind shift for you, kindness, taking things apart. What are some of the things about Venus that you feel like was the most beneficial? Um, for me, it was definitely um, a lot of the podcasts and the articles and the interviews. I think every time a new podcast came out, I listened to it two or three times. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Fighting some congestion. Um, Bless you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I listened and I read and it helped me so much because I realized um, there were a lot of ways that I was thinking about it being all or nothing, black or white. Yeah. Um, I realized, too, the magic of calories, calories in, calories out. I mean, I obviously, I do think food quality helps immensely, which you learn really quickly when you start going into deficit calories that, yes. uh, you know, um, a serving of Cheetos is not as filling or as long-lasting as, yeah. uh, you know, maybe um, an apple or a salad with some chicken. So there's definitely some trade-offs. But, yeah. Um, it was nice, too, not having good food, bad food. Like, yeah. I know those are so basic, but we get so conditioned to that, those extremes. Yes. Right. And I was also conditioned, um, I'd really lost the majority of my weight, um, focusing kind of on internal hunger cues, mm -hmm. but that didn't help me factor in, well, what if I really want to eat and I'm out with friends? Suddenly it gave me a lot of freedom to go, wow, I have enough calories to do this. And mm -hmm. as long as I'm not stuffed or something, you know, I can have a little something and walk away not feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I, I just learned so much. I learned a lot, too, about um, making it sustainable. Another thing I don't think is really tr it, it is more. I see it more now than I ever have before. But um, I just don't see it being like a lifestyle for a lot of people or I didn't then everything was just again to those extremes mm -hmm. and I am it's on or off. yeah it's on or it's off you know I'm going really hard and if I'm not going really hard then I'm a failure and it's miserable and I there's just not any way when you get stuck in that um that mind hole there's not really a way to like go forward with progress because nothing else counts unless it's 110% times 10. Right. And we can't all live our lives like that. No. Um, you know, doing gross amounts of cardio or weightlifting five hours a day, nobody can sustain that long term. Okay. Um, and it's not physically healthy for our bodies. So yeah. those are kind of some things I learned um, really. And it just because of learning those things and just learning the basics about calories and they're not being good foods, bad foods. There might be foods that are better for us or make you feel better, but nothing's off limits. Doing that allowed me to take um, a mindset and a posture of like, oh, I can relax a little bit. I still I can start focusing then on habits and daily actions, and yeah. those are what count for the long term. Um, I think that's even though I, it's been very slow progress for me at times compared to some um, of the other Venus women. Um, it's also allowed me, a, um, I feel like it's allowed me a lot of freedom to be able to go the long term. And yes, I still have meltdowns occasionally. Like, you know, I just got married, um, last summer. And when I start thinking about having kids, I'm not kidding. Pregnancy weight scares me a little, but, <laughs> but I mean, aside from that, it's like, okay, deep breaths. Like it's not the end of the world. Like it's, it's just simple. It's those actions and those habits again. Um, you were actually really instrumental in telling, telling me like, Hey, I, there was a time I was really like struggling inside. I was like, Oh, I have to do all this. And you're like, just focus on your daily actions. Don't focus on the out outcomes. No. And because uh, you can't control the outcome. All you can control is what you do. So I'm big on that. Like I track my inputs. What can I control and what happens will happen. Yeah. And sometimes it does happen faster and sometimes it happens slower right and if you give up because it didn't happen when you wanted it to happen you might miss out on right. it actually happening right uh, so those have been that's been really key for me too and that was I don't know I I just feel like I owe so much to Venus I learned so much I still me. learn a lot like me too I don't know it was really it was very 
empowering sounds so like flaky, but it was really empowering. It was very life changing for me. Yeah. Right. So, um, well, I want to talk about, cause to me, one of my favorite things about your story is you're just, it's kind of like you ramped up and it's just like you just cruise. And I love, I love that. To me, you're like one of the only like veterans that never really did a contest. Like, you said you took the long-term approach. Yes. Um, it wasn't about a 12-week. It was about a lifestyle. So talk about how you ramped out from, so you started with one set of every exercise mm -hmm. body weight, and then you were up to like two sets. And then, so how, how has your exercise and nutrition kind of morphed throughout five years here? Um, well, for one, I, I finally about, was it uh, two years ago, like June of 2014, I hit like my three year anniversary. And I, you know, again, like, I, I have to point out one of the things that helps with our life decisions is we can be inspired by people, but we cannot compare ourselves to someone else. It yeah. is such a talk about goal hijacking, talk about like, joy destroying, like, um, so I really, one thing I had to first do is let go of, okay, what, you know, what everyone else was doing. And that is not a judgment on anyone who gets super lean or does it in 12 weeks. I just realized that's not really me. Um, mm. A six pack abs, even if I ever did reach that, I don't know it's, if it's maintainable. And if it's not maintainable, am I going to feel like a failure in the end? Right. Um, so I, that was the first thing and that took that took like the first three years really too of just a constant practice of not get to that point. yeah I'm not comparing myself you know yes getting inspiration yes getting help and support and, and all the love and, and everything but not not comparing myself and my goals um, but I hit that period and I had um, finally reached the, the highest um, the like the range for the Venus metrics I was on the, the high end. And again, I feel like that's pretty, like, it's very comfortable, maintainable, natural for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have about 41 inch hips, which is literally at, right at the first measurable outcome and a uh, 28 inch waist right now. And I realized, I was like, you know, this is, this is easy to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I really started looking at it. Um, I jumped out of deficit for the first time in three years. I've had periods of, of, of eating strictly at maintenance for a few weeks at a time, but mm -hmm. I literally like stepped away from deficit and was mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Um, and started really just eating at maintenance and getting a feel for that. And I started focusing more on the types of food I was eating, um, really more like quality foods, um, mm -hmm. mostly for my health. Um, I still had some, you know, a little bit of health issues and I really wanted to, kind of start delving into that a little bit more of food and nutrition. So I, it, and I knew to do that, I couldn't be in a deficit because if you're going to start eating more foods that are considered healing, like especially for gut health, deficits, deficit can be a lot harder to do that yeah. at and not feel really drained and depleted. Right. Um, so I did that and workouts wise, I just started, I, I did start experimenting with some different workouts that I really still stayed true to weightlifting started adding in more flexibility. Um, I was a gymnast when I was a lot younger and I knew that things like back bends are really good because you learn how to be flexible under tension. Yeah. Um, so I start, I just started adding in more things. Um, by that time, my husband and I had just started dating. So life was wonderful and rosy and, mm -hmm. um, exciting. And I just gave myself the freedom to live without sitting there and going, I mean, I didn't go to the extreme. I still kept my daily inputs of like, hey, I know I want to work out. I know I want to be walking as much mm -hmm. as possible. I know I want to be eating well. But I kind of let go of the grip of um, counting every calorie. And I kind of let go of the grip of being worried about whether or not I was in deficit and how lean mm -hmm. I was getting. And I think that was the first major point where I was able to start accepting myself and start, like, practicing self-love. I mean, um, there's so many extremes in our Western culture. And, um, even though I had a lot of tools and I had reached a lot of places of peace along the way, it was the first time I really just kind of let go. And I was like, this is who I am. Like, and this is good. And not just, okay. Like this is who I am. Good. This is what yeah. I look like today. Awesome. Alrighty. 
<laughs> uh, seems it's, so simple, but it's not. It's no mind. <laughs> it's hard because it's like my hands, you know, are like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't, you know, my teeth are crooked. My hips are big. You know, you, you start thinking of things that you dislike about yourself and you start focusing on those exclusively. And it, you know, yeah, I wear a bikini and I got stretch marks and I got a little belly roll and my hips jiggle. And it's like, whatever. I just. Actually, we recently relocated to Florida, my husband and I, for work, and um, it's been so freeing down here. I'm in the Florida Keys because there are 60 and 80 year olds that are like <laughs> rocking bi- rock bikinis, whether <laughs> they should be or not. Like they're in bikinis, so I'm like, if I can wear bikinis, I think I can wear a bikini and just feel fine about it. Yeah. Um. So. You you are past fun in a bikini. You oh. are in the acceptable, squarely acceptable range. Thank you. I feel <laughs> I feel a lot better about it than I used to. I had a mindset too, especially before I started Venus, that I can never wear a bikini. Like you have to be like you have to earn a bikini. You have to be good enough for a bikini, and right. that is just such a polluted way of thinking it yeah. really sets I don't know I think that's a terrible way of thinking um and it's still something I have to struggle with every day like I, it's not an instant like you turn it, it off natural yeah no not quite yet there's still some times when we first um moving was a huge change and that was another thing I had to kind of overcome um recently we moved here in October of last year and it's been six months although it only feels like it's been six days <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really had to learn how to adjust my workouts and the way I approached it because uh, gyms are super expensive. They're super small. We decided we weren't going to join a gym. And I felt like I really need a lot heavier weights than what I can really do at home. So I had to be open to experimenting. I had to be open to, like, uh, walking away from the, the thinking pattern of I can only be thin if I do this, or I can only be in shape and fit if I do this. Mm, yeah. Um, we close ourselves off to a lot of opportunities and possibilities when we start getting in the binary trap of X or Y. Yes. And don't consider if there's 24 other letters <laughs> in the alphabet. Yes. Um, so that, that, that was a real challenge for me though. That took, um, probably the first four months that I was here. Um, and I also think sometimes we don't factor in stress levels. My stress level when, when, before we moved here was really low, despite getting married and having a lot of like immediate life changes. Um, things were very stable in my life. My schedule was very stable. Work was very stable. Mm-hmm. And I think stress can be a very, very big impactor into like ramping up or down into maintenance. Absolutely. Um, sometimes the, the times you need maintenance calories, especially the most are the times of high stress. And it's hard to give yourself permission to do that because the, the nagging fear in our minds as women is if I eat at maintenance long term, I'm going to get, I'm not going to reach my goals or I'm going to get fat or, and it's not right. true. That's the reason it's called maintenance is you simply maintain and it, it lets your body like go, that's one less thing I have to stress about. <clears throat> exactly. Um, Same thing for workouts, you know. Yes. Every workout doesn't have to be hitting a personal record. Exactly. Um, For myself, I've started, like, going back to more, like, bands and body weight um, variations because that's what I can do with our limited housing space. And And it's a darn good workout. It is. If you learned how to modify or progress, like, holy crap, it's just as good as weights. Mm -hmm. Um, You maybe aren't squatting 320 pounds in the gym, but... Mm -hmm you're still getting a really effective workout and it's still challenging your, um, your entire body. So, yes. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's kind of in, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I trail off a lot sometimes. So. <laughs> now you have great points. I'm glad that you do. So let's talk about like, what does a day of eating look like for you? Maybe even compare like a maintenance or a deficit day. Okay. Well, I am currently a little bit in deficit right now or was until recently, um, cause with the move, put on a little bit, I did put on a little bit of weight. Um, you know, you're, we, it was, uh, 48 hours in a car driving from Colorado to the Florida oh. Keys. So yeah, sometimes you eat some, some really uh, good fast food. Yeah. And, um, I think to the stress of moving, um, there's a little bit of just natural, like, um, water weight 
you know, Absolutely. the water weight swings up. Absolutely. So I went on a bit of a deficit. I also, again, sometimes when I freak out with changes, the one thing I can control is my body. So I was like, oh, I got to go in deficit and lose weight so I can fit in down here. And, yeah. Um, right now, I do have to just claim, like, I am seeing a nutritionist. So my eating right now is a little, like, well, it would seem very restricted right now. I'm doing an elimination diet, which sometimes is awesome and sometimes sucks. Right. Um, but when I first started Venus, um, I ate a lot. And when I say this, I, I, I also say this, I ate a lot more junk than I do now. Yeah. Um, because I had permission to, in a good way, if I want ice cream and Doritos in the same day, I gosh, I'm going to do that. Um, and when I first started Venus too, you know, we, there wasn't the, um, the cal- the nutrition calculator that they have now, the, they, John and Brad hadn't worked on reverse tapering calories yet which is huge because it does Mm. allow you to hit maintenance and start gradually entering maintenance without um rebound weight gain that sometimes can happen um so when all of that kind of came on the scene um i did start like following the calculator's recommendations pretty closely as far as like increasing my calories Mm -hmm. and um also i think my I just realized, like, real food is really good, and I don't feel great living off of Doritos and yeah. cottage cheese. And, Same here. Yeah, I just, like, I found a lot of way to do, a lot of ways to do the um, the calorie fixes, you know, the, the sugar-free puddings and jellos. And, you know, when if your calories are really low and when you're first starting out in deficit, I, you know, you do what you have to do. But health-wise, I just feel so much better um, eating more foods, eating more real foods. And it's not a good food, bad food thing. It's, you know, where ice cream is bad. I still have ice cream, but I might make it myself. Or um, right now I can't have dairy on my elimination diet, so I make coconut milk ice cream. Mm -hmm. Um, That's actually got just as much fat, if not more, than, like, real custard. And so Mm -hmm. just just kind of allowing myself not only in losing the uh, good food, bad food labels early on, but also allowing myself to not think that I'm going to be deprived of something if I stop eating Doritos and ice cream and tacos and yeah, all the time. Right. (laughs) So (laughs) it was really freeing at first. And I still like, sometimes I still really crave Doritos. I'm not getting good, but Um, it was just, it opened me up to a lot more possibilities too. I love really good imported cheese, um, which I didn't eat before. Um, I think probably the biggest takeaway is when we move closer towards maintenance, it allows us more calories and what it should, I hate to use the word should, it sounds a little like box in, but what it should do, I feel is move us more and more in our journey towards making whole food choices. We have the calories, a little bit more calories now. So I can have a a couple ounces of, you know, exotic French cheese and a glass of wine and Mm. really enjoy it and not, and not feel like as restricted, I guess, you know, you you just have your limits. And like I said, when you have your limits, you go with them. So Um, that was another change I think for me too, is just, again, that freedom. And I finally also, um, the last couple of years, I don't really count macros or calories. I still try to focus on eating protein at every meal, Uh um, or most meals, Uh but I don't get, I just don't do it like I used to. I don't count the calories as much. I am right now on this elimination diet, weirdly enough, just because when, you can't have gluten and certain grains and dairy and stuff like it. Yeah. It adds up. It's like you're doing the normal same old that you kind of keep a tally in your head. Yeah. It either adds up too much or I have a hard time getting it enough because I'm eating also trying to eat a lot of vegetables, like just to fill up. So, um, I am watching my calories right now, but for a couple of years, I mean, I just focused on, you know, the daily habits of, I try to eat some fruits or vegetables at each meal. I try to eat some protein. And um, the weekends um, when my husband and I were dating then, we would go out for 
um, meals and we'd go on these like day road trips. So that meant going to breweries because he loves breweries and having a couple of beers and like, you know, that might be our big meal for the day. It wasn't three meals of that, but um, yeah. I just really, I think, I think the best thing I can say is when you get closer to maintenance and, and as you enter maintenance and not to be afraid of maintenance. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Like you still keep tabs on things. But it's yeah. not a it's not a permission to like go binge. Yeah. Uh, it's just that wonderful freeing feeling of like, oh, okay, like and it's not a thing of I earned this. It's just like I get to like enjoy a little bit more. Yeah. And if I put on a couple of pounds I know what to do. Exactly. You know. Not You're not on... gonna get to maintenance and just live there. Sorry no. to tell people out there. <laughs> no, I still like I said, I still do deficit. Like, yeah, I still, still go on deficits. And... And, but we don't live there. It's just like periods. Like maybe once a year you just kind of s- s- take it back enough. I think everything is in um, seasons. Mm-hmm. And so when I was living in a colder climate, actually I really didn't put on tons of weight during the winter. But, you know, yeah, a couple pounds, two or three pounds, you can't get out as much. I hate treadmills. Mm-hmm. I don't like cardio classes. Um, I like walking and I like walking outdoors and it's really hard to do in Colorado winters. <laughs> yeah. Now you have all year. To walk I have up. all year and, uh, that's pretty nice. It so, is. yeah. So you've given some great advice, like to those who are listening and who are for the first time kind of testing the waters of maintenance, what would your advice be? Um, my, um, man, my mantra when I started Venus is I want to be Venus for life. So, um, so there was that, and it was also, even though this applies to, applied more to deficit, it still applies, I think, to habits. You can't climb a mountain in one step. Yeah. It's step after step after step. And the faster you lose it, the faster you regain, regain it. So, I guess my advice for maintenance and the one thing I learned is just take the medium road, (laughs) take the middle road. Like there's no reason to go extreme on either side. Like maintenance days don't have to be three and 4,000 calories unless you're a guy, lucky you, um, (laughs) you know, deficit days don't have to be, um, 500 calories and a cup of coffee for, you know, two weeks straight. Right. Um, find the things that you really love and focus on feeling really good and just, I just think it's the daily habits and the daily actions, you know, if you start making the habits where I, you know, the habit of I'm going to eat protein and vegetables at every meal or to at least a meal a day. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm, you know, I'm going to try to include more fruit for me, that means a smoothie. Um, so I start, you know, I try to have a fruit smoothie once a day, things like that. The little things over time add up to really huge things. Yeah. And you just kind of get better and better. I'm leaner now and feel better now than I have when I first entered maintenance in 2014. And um, I haven't lost a ton of weight either since then. It's I've lost a few pounds, um, but it's mostly just focusing on getting better and better and just like your habits and refining. And I, just, I have to say it again, you just make it for life. It's yeah. something, you know... Even if circumstances change like mine, it's like, well, I know I still want to work out. I know I still want to take the time to walk and lift weights. I started experimenting more, and that was great. I found out I don't like Pilates. Okay. Um, You know, just different things like that. Like, it it helps. It really does. So I think if you can – I find that if I can focus on that for maintenance, it's really helpful and stop thinking about the what-ifs. And um, also, you don't know until you try something. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would say 95 to 99% of the women out there that are scared to do maintenance or really just fully release themselves to eat there. You, you might see like, you know, quit, quit looking at the scale. Don't do that for about a month and just let yourself be. And if you're focused on habits and you still carry those forward, you're not going to really see any changes. You might even be shocked. You might lose a couple of pounds yet. Yeah. So I think it's really a journey of self-trust. And that's hard because we have a lot of external voices that like mm. want to get in our heads or they already are. And we do a lot of comparing and competition. And I think, 
I think self-trust is probably one of the biggest things to like work through and something I'm still constantly working through. It's not instantaneous. It's just, it's just part of the process, but yeah, just give yourself some, some kudos. I mean, if you've gone out, if you've done the work, yeah, yeah like you can still keep doing the work. It doesn't end. It just is a little different. Well, uh, thank you for your time and for sharing. Yes. I think that you have a wonderful story and we all can learn from your journeys. Well, thanks for having me. It's like such an honor to be here. So thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. So for Katura, I'm Coach Liz and that is your Venus podcast. Mm-hmm.